This is the Be Quiet Pure Loop 3LX, the latest AIO from a brand that's all about silence and performance. What sets this series apart from Be Quiet's usual releases is the price. If their other AIOs are priced like BMWs, then these Pure Loops are more like a Honda or a Toyota. It comes with everything you need in the box. This package has all the mounting hardware for Intel and AMD sockets, and there's also a small tube of thermal paste right there. We have three 120 millimeter Lightwings LX high-speed ARGB fans. They're pretty plain and basic in terms of construction and build quality, nothing fancy. Spec-wise, they max out at 2100 RPM and can move air up to around 62 cubic feet per minute. Static pressure measures 2.51 millimeters H2O, which is decent for radiator use. What's different on these compared to what I'm used to seeing on Be Quiet's fans is this new daisy chain cable system. It lets you connect the fans to each other with a single cable instead of using a separate PWM and ARGB cable for every fan. I like the idea, but it's still a little messy with that extra connector hanging off of every fan. One of the main features of the Pure Loop 3LX series is the changeable light foils. It comes with 10 different designs that peel off and fit onto the face of the water block, and then it gets capped off with this little plastic cover. This right here is one of the main cost cutting features. It's a way to get the look of a screen, but without actually having one. The radiator has your standard dimensions for this size AIO. It measures 397 millimeters long and it's 27 millimeters thick. It's an all aluminum construction and it's got a very minimal design aesthetic. There's no patterns or embossed logos on there anywhere. It's just plain black with a slight bevel on the sides. And if you look closely on this side right here, you can see this little screw. That's actually a refill port. It gives you the ability to top up the coolant as it evaporates over time, basically extending the lifespan of the AIO. It's good to see they kept that option even though this is a cheaper model, but they didn't include their usual bottle of extra coolant that comes with their other AIOs. So you're gonna have to go out and find your own coolant if you're planning to do a refill or a top up. Tubing at the radiator is reinforced and it feels sturdy. There's no concerns there. And I like how they kept the tubes close together. It keeps everything tight and just looks a little cleaner in the build. Tube connections at the water block are sturdy too. And they have your typical rotating movement. And again, tightly spaced. The water block cold plates made from pure copper. There's no shiny nickel plating on this one. And like Be Quiet's other AIOs, it does not come with thermal paste pre-applied. That might be a turnoff for some beginners, but it really doesn't need to be. They give you thermal paste in the box and it's pretty easy to apply. You'll be able to see me do it in this video when we get to the installation, and I'll include a link in the description to a more detailed video if you want even more help. Moving on to the installation process, the first thing I like to do with AIOs is get the fans installed. You don't wanna be trying to install fans after the radiator is mounted in the case. Pay attention to what side the fan wires are on, so when you mount the radiator, you don't end up with a bad cable placement in your build. Just make sure you're gonna be able to route them through the cutouts in the case and get them to where they need to go without being in the way or looking out of place and we just need to go around and screw them down with four screws each. Now daisy chain the fans together by plugging them into each other. Then plug in the RGB PWM splitter cable that comes in the package with the mounting hardware. This is what's gonna provide power to the fans and let you control the lighting. And now just set this whole thing aside for a sec and let's move on to the next step. I'm installing the Pure Loop 3 on an Intel Raptor Lake system that uses socket LGA1700. If you're installing on AMD, there's a couple of different steps that I'll show you in just a minute. The first thing we need to do is prepare the Intel backplate. We gotta take these four posts and slide them into the bracket one at a time, and they lock in place with these little rubber O-rings. The position does matter depending on which socket you're working with. For LGA1700, it's the widest set of holes toward the ends of the bracket arms. Once you have all the posts installed in the right places, we can take the bracket, line it up with the holes on the back of the motherboard, and just push it into place. Back around on the other side, we have to take these standoff screws and thread them onto each of the four posts on the bracket around the CPU socket. I find the easiest way to do this is to get them threaded on loosely by hand and then tighten them down after with a screwdriver to make sure everything's nice and secure. Next, we have to install a set of two brackets onto the standoffs, and these are what's gonna hold the water block down onto the CPU. These attach on here, one above and one below the CPU socket. The mounting holes have different positions to accommodate different sockets, just like the back plate. And again, I'm gonna be using the widest position for LGA1700, and then these just screw down with two screws each. If you're installing on AMD, those first couple steps are a bit different. You need to start by removing the stock cooler mounts from the motherboard. Take out the four screws and they should just come right off. Next, take the four AMD spacer nuts and put them over the posts that were holding the mounts we just removed. Now we can install the two mounting brackets for the water block. Note there's two mounting positions again. Position zero is set up for maximum compatibility with different boards, and setup eight is optimized for maximum cooling on Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9000 series processors. From here, all the steps are the same regardless of which platform you're on. 
The AIO has three cables. I'm gonna take the one coming from the fans and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. There's two more cables coming from the water block. This one's for the pump speed control. I'm gonna plug that into the AIO pump header. Now I'm gonna take the ARGB cable from the water block and connect it to the splitter cable that's attached to the fans. And then the last connector on the splitter cable plugs into an open three pin ARGB header on the motherboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the radiator. It's got 12 mounting points, but I'm actually just gonna use four because this is my test bench and I'm gonna be taking this AIO back out to make room for the next one that comes into the studio for testing. But by all means, if this is more of a permanent installation for you, go ahead and use all the screws. Since there's no pre-applied thermal paste, we need to apply our own so we can get the water block installed. I'm gonna take the little tube that came in the box and just apply a small line right down the middle of the CPU. Like I mentioned before, if you want a more detailed video about thermal paste application, I'll link one for you down in the description. All right, before we put the block down on the CPU, make sure you remove the plastic cover from the cold plate. You don't wanna forget that. I've done it and trust me, it's bad. Now line up the holes in the bracket with the screws on either side of the block and lower it down onto the CPU and then tighten the two screws alternating back and forth a little bit at a time to help evenly distribute the pressure and spread that thermal paste. One of the strengths of this cooler is that Be Quiet doesn't force you to use any proprietary software. It just works with your motherboard's lighting control system. It's a much cleaner way to control lighting than having to get yet another application on your computer that just adds bloat to your system. Even though it doesn't have an LCD screen, the lighting foils look cool. It pretty much looks like an LCD screen, but obviously without the versatility and customization. Out of the box, you're limited to the 10 foils that come with the AIO, but if you can find a way to make your own, then I could see a huge amount of potential here. Still though, even with the 10 foils, it's a level of customization over and above what you get with any non-LCD water block. I like it. I think it's a clever way to bring some swag to an AIO without the added cost of LCD screens and without mandatory software. For the performance testing, I'm starting things off here with Cinebench R23. I like to use this benchmark for coolers because it's basically a CPU stress test. It puts a huge load on the CPU that most users won't ever encounter during daily use, at least not for a significant period of time. The pump speed's locked at 100% and the case fans are fixed at 500 RPM while I varied the AIO fans in 25% increments. The Pure Loop 3LX is delivering good performance in this test, almost keeping up with the results I saw in Be Quiet's more expensive Light Loop AIO. To simulate a gaming workload, I did a custom run of 3D Mark Time Spy at 1080p resolution. This is a much more realistic scenario that gamers can actually expect to encounter. The maximum temperature at the slowest fan speed was 60C on the performance cores. This clearly shows there's no reason to run the AIO fans at higher speeds unless you want a really chilly CPU all the time, but it just isn't necessary. And that brings us to noise. This thing's whisper quiet up to 50%, but there's a big jump in noise once the fans hit 75% and pushing the fan speeds up to their maximum comes with yet another noticeable noise penalty. But the good news is under realistic conditions like gaming, there's really no reason to ever push the fans that far. You should be able to get a really good balance of cooling and noise in most situations with this Pure Loop 3LX. If you're a power user and regularly use tasks that push your CPU to its limits, then a higher end cooler with stronger performance would make more sense if you really care about noise. Overall, I like what Be Quiet did here with the Pure Loop 3LX. It's a simple but effective way to enhance aesthetics without implementing an LCD screen and forcing you to use software. And because of that, it lowers the overall cost for system builders on a budget who want a cooler from an established brand like Be Quiet. For the price, this lineup offers great value for money. Purchasing links, full specs, and details are below in the description. Check that stuff out if you're interested. And drop a comment and tell us what you think about this new cooler and those light foils. Get subscribed for more content, and we'll see you soon.